Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamanova Yoga, I'm Ali and I wanted to briefly, uh, I'll try to keep it very brief, talk about emotional healing and also uh, how to use the website and my classes uh, on YouTube and also how to use the upcoming programs. So um, we we are diving on my website from Yoga for the Organs, which was very enjoyable for me to create program. I am glad um, that uh, many of you enjoyed it as well. I'm very thankful to be able to go into those subjects. They're really inspiring. So now we're going to yoga for the subtle bodies. So now from anatomy, we're moving into a spiritual anatomy and um, that is equally as exciting of a subject because we're going to cover um, a lot of the subtle bodies, something that is really in the uh, domain of yoga. Yoga really deals with chakras, with energy, um, healing, filling our meridians, uh, filling our energy body. And this first week of yoga for the subtle bodies will be um, the dances of the subtle body. So um, in essence, those would be the physical bodies of the subtle bodies, so the most um, dense, the ones that comprise the physical structure. So we have etheric, emotional, mental, lower mental and higher mental uh, body. The first three, etheric, emotional and lower mental, they stay with this physical body only and they disintegrate with, uh, with the physical body. The higher mental continues if there is um, rebirth or uh, moving on or however it is, the higher mental is more connected to higher concepts, to divine uh, thought, to um, universal mind, not quite the universal mind, there is higher levels of the subtle bodies, but we can reach out of the ego mind uh, through those bodies. So emotional healing, I'm going to go back to the, <laughs> I'm going to go back to the subject. So um, a lot of, um, not all, but it is quite common that disease first starts um, on an emotional level. So there is a trapped emotion, unexpressed emotion, trauma, that's also um, stores in the emotional body often, or in the etheric body, as a dysregulation um, a pattern of disturbance in the body, which later manifests in a physical symptom into the physical body, the one we can see with our eyes. And um, the way to heal, obviously, is to go into the root cause. Now, oftentimes things seem random, like accidents or lifestyle related disease or something just happened genetically or whatever. Things seem to be caused by something else. Still, the emotional pattern may have occurred first and led the person down the road of the behavior that would cause the disease. So sometimes even when things seem to be a, com a completely different correlation, they may or may not be a completely different correlation. It still might be an emotional pattern. Sometimes it is um, a toxicity or um, an accident, something like that. It could be something else. But oftentimes when we're talking about autoimmune, chronic disease, uh, uh, strange stuff, um, we are uh, oftentimes have to explore the emotional body because we are human and we tend to store a lot of emotional trauma and a lot of uh, unexpressed or known as trapped emotion. Now, how you can um, how you can navigate through that via yoga? First of all, yoga teaches us that further for, forward uh, in our life when we encounter emotional uh, situations to be able to um, to flow them, express them, not store them, let them out and return to equilibrium. And we do that through the breathing techniques in yoga. They teach us how to uh, be aware of our breath during challenging situations and return to a state of equanimity. Another thing yoga helps with is when we do the high intensity interval training classes that I have plenty of on my website and on uh, YouTube, uh, free and on my membership, which is at a very low cost. Again, that pattern of speeding up the breath and a kind of a, a, a rapid breathing imitates what typically would happen in nature, how our physiolog physiology is, um, conditioned, we're conditioned to encounter danger 
and run from it and then return to a calm state. So um, the high intensity interval training can be really good for, uh, for uh, balancing or stimulating the parasympathetic response. So the rest and digest, the feeling calm response. It seems counterintuitive because a stressed out person often thinks they shouldn't do a workout that is high intensity, but it, in, at least in half of the cases, again, not all, they might actually need exactly that because they're too sedentary and they can't let things out. Everything gets trapped and stored and it becomes a really, really, you know, uh, under pressure pot. So we need to release the pressure. Um, another really, really important way to release uh, old trauma or just newly occurring trauma is the shaking uh, class. I have a few classes with shaking at the end or during the class and I have one called shamanic shaking on the website I want to say there's one on YouTube that has shaking it is included within the vinyasa shaking itself is a mechanism that shows that the person the animal um, will heal they're releasing this out of the tissue out of the fascia out of the muscles etc they're not going to store this so um, oftentimes we think we have to think about our problems and be all here and that uh, via the divine route of higher mind and concepts, ideals and, uh, and lifting the mind from the instincts and patterns and belief systems into the heart, that can help, but it's less common that it will. It is more common that working in um, the body, working, releasing, balancing, moving tissue, shaking, um, jumping, a vinyasa, a heavy breath work with each yoga class, that is far uh, more likely to work. And that is via the yoga path. Now, I also in the latest uh, classes, now I'm turning the attention towards things that are visible to a few people, but mostly not visible to most, and those are the subtle bodies. So we're going to work on the etheric body for class on Monday. That's the closest body to the physical body. Again, a lot of pattern of uh, disease starts there. Uh, imbalance in the etheric body will cause imbalance eventually in the physical. So it first manifests in the aura. As, uh, people call it aura, but it has a lot of layers. And the etheric body has a chakra system, the meridian system. It is a physical structure in the sense that it has all of that physical anatomy in, in itself, actual things that we carry for this lifetime that can be affected through the physical, but also uh, through energy medicine, emotional medicine, etc. Then we're going to work on the emotional body, the second further out. Again, they affect each other. They flow um, yeah, in and out of each other the way they also flow in and out of the physical so they have their two-way street um, and the, uh, the third one which is the most important of the series but the third for the week would be the mental body because once we learn uh, and I have here on YouTube um, uh, how to deal with your mental loops uh, it was a challenge with it challenge it's, I use it as a, a word that everybody understands what it means, you know, I don't want it to be challenging, I want it to be liberating. But if I say it's a liberation, no one would know that is a seven day challenge <laughs> to pay attention to our mental loops so that we get out of um, a negative um, internal dialogue, uh, parent thinking, negative thinking, self-defeating um, uh, patterns, uh, habitual negative thinking, etc. It's a lot of words for similar similar patterns um, where we lack self-love and we are stuck in a in a pattern sometimes we don't even have the um, outer observer that allows us to uh, to observe our own process and pattern and repetitive pattern and oftentimes irrational pattern illogical pattern mm. so when we reach out of the um, out of the lower mind in the third chakra and go into the higher mind in the fourth chakra the heart we move from emotions of fear insecurity anxiety etc into emotions of love compassion desire to serve um, gratitude and and so forth so the thoughts elevate we uh, we are more concerned with service to humanity with uh, higher concepts uh, innovation um, 
enjoying the moment the daily stuff it doesn't have to be you know world changing things that we we do we can just um we can just enjoy our own selves our own space love ourselves love our family children whoever is in our life and that in itself you know affects humanity or we can actually be engaged in creative work and uh, service of uh, some sort and art and um, and so forth so there is many pathways but I don't want to make it that it has to be very grander in order to be meaningful so um, the way to use the website is to become aware of the emotions and as we become aware of our thoughts so the mental body the mental body trickles down into the emotional body and starts to regulate it can heal it because we become more intuitive and uh, rational so we have uh, 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 we have steady uh, logic and intuition in good balance rather than uh, erratic patterns and, and that trickles down into the emotional the emotional body uh, benefits really from from rhythmic activities so if we have a rhythm to our life to our seasons to our day um, uh, to, to the year if we create a rhythmic pattern that regulates the emotional body so the emotional body is not frazzled and we're not just um, unable to deal with our own selves we, we just anything can throw us uh, into a spin of emotion but we become more regulated that doesn't mean that we're always going to be in complete control and control is um, almost a negative word to self-awareness so that doesn't mean that we're always going to be completely self-aware but we're going to find a steady flow where we're for the most part for the majority of our day um, aware of our own self our own processes our own thoughts we're not flowing with some pattern that came to us when we were children and so we as we become aware we start to heal the past as well a lot of those things are from um, the unconscious years in our childhood and those are obviously going to take a lot longer to heal but that's the process you keep coming back to it the shamanic shaking so the shaking tends to return us back to parasympathetic state so if you experience stress do the class shamanic shaking and you will return to a parasympathetic state same goes for the somatic classes i have uh, quite a few somatic classes same goes to vinyasa for vinyasa and heat now with one thing i just want to make one disclaimer with the heat if you are in a heavy um adrenal fatigue state um, and for adrenal fatigue, if you have it, you probably know it, you, you can relax, uh, irregular sleeping patterns, uh, you, you get a little um, hyper at night and then uh, you're tired in the morning and um, fatigue and tiredness and kidney issues and um, water retention and such things. For adrenal fatigue, there could be uh, different um, issues, including thyroid, um, uh, gets affected. Now for that heat might not be the best um, and a lot of people do have adrenal fatigue so for them they are better off shaking somatic vinyasa and once they heal and find a rhythm to their life then heat can be a benefit i also have uh, beginner heats or really mild heats this week i'm uh, scheduling um, heat workout heat yoga workout for the small muscles so working on the inner thighs and no impact heat so that can work for someone that is in a mild adrenal fatigue but in general if you have uh, adrenal fatigue that you're certain you have and that's a very broad term but if you have uh, issues with exhaustion and um, a prolonged stress then the somatic classes would be far better to work your way up i have pilates classes as well and you will just watch your own body you want to be um, um, to have energy after a class if you don't then back off um, put a little less energy into the class give it not all you have but give it 50 percent of all you got and so forth so right now we're we're going deeper we've been always going deeper with the classes but now we're gonna dive into the subtle bodies and i'm also going to bring some of the classes from the organs because the lungs was a very spiritual theme the brain was spiritual the heart the, we did a chakra the higher heart that is already um a chakra is not from of the physical body it's not a three-dimensional chakra 
it's four or five dimensional chakra so it's uh, um, not n not a part per se of the emotional and the etheric body but it's moving out into the outer uh, bodies and uh, we'll continue we'll do nine chakra we'll do the soul star and the earth and uh, earth star and all of that there is quite a bit uh, like every subject i go into i'm i'm thinking my, my goodness i can stay in this subject for a year but i also want to keep it very dynamic and expansive and just as a big learning experience like a yoga school so we move and morph into another subject and then eventually when um, the cosmic time is right the planetary time, we go back to those other subjects and they just really weave into one beautiful uh, holistic team. So uh, come to my website for the new classes. Um, on another note, I'm not posting as much. I still will post. I will always post uh, here as long as this platform exists. Uh, but I'm posting less because there's so many restrictions with... Um, with, I don't even want to go into <laughs> negative stuff now, but if you know any subject that is, uh, any platform that is, uh, doesn't punish you for posting and it's, uh, it's up and coming and it's a good fit for yoga, um, let me know because I'm ready, <laughs> I'm ready to jump and uh, otherwise you can always find me on the website if you struggle financially and you really want to get a membership, message me. I, I will accommodate uh, people that are in uh, experiencing harsh times um, and uh, we all support each other. This is all I, I try to make my own offering sustainable so I can keep going. But at the same time, if you need help with the membership, I can uh, I can help you. All right. So I'll see you soon. I'll see you on the website. I'll see you here. Thank you for watching and to a beautiful healing experience uh, with the rest of the year. Namaste.